every day has a starting point and every day has an ending point. We forget that when we start out of the day, we need to have what you're going to learn today is a written daily plan of action. So from the moment you start out your day, we have to know clearly what it is that we're going to accomplish. Because here's what happened, and this is when we feel overwhelmed. We have thousands of things that we could do. And so we hit the ground running, and all of a sudden we blink our eyes, and at the end of the day, we look at that and we say, what did we get done? If I can make sure that people are able to hear it and able to see it, I'd like you to chat in the day into the chat box. How many times have you absolutely started your day, blinked your eyes and realized that the day was over and you did not complete anything of importance? So I'm gonna pause there for just a moment and make sure that people can see what we're talking about and if it sounds familiar. John, I'm going to open up your speak, speaker for just a second. So, John, there you are. Are you able to see with us, John? I think he's muted now. All right. Well, John is our chief inspiration officer. He's going to be absolutely helping us to do that. When it comes to time management, there's a start of the day and the end of the day. And I want to make sure that you can that you can get the right things done at the right time. Gosh, we've got a lot of people and I'm seeing a ton of people. Diane is saying she's busy all day, but there's still too much to do. Kelly is saying all the time. Amen, sister. I see it. I hear it. I feel it. Are there other people that have um, places that they're really struggling with every day of every minute of every week? Okay, so I'm going to move on. Now, what I love about the seven minute life is that they're just some simple things. And here are the four strategies that we're going to talk about today is as you look at these strategies, I want you to think about what activities move you forward towards your goals. Now, as a financial advisor and as a realtor, my guess is there are only a few things that move you forward towards your goals. Once you've decided those key tasks, the, seven, the next thing that you have to do is decide what you're gonna do today. So let's go back. What activities move you towards your goals? What are you gonna do today? You then need to prioritize your tasks and you need a written daily plan of action. So here we go. Start of the day starts. You blink your eyes and you hit the end of the day. And you're thinking where in the world did that time go? Well, we can change that. And here's what we're gonna do. Yeah, John is saying, please post your comments to all panelists and all attendees. First question we have to ask when we're creating our daily plan of action is what activities move you towards your goals? Not what plans, not what things that we're gonna intend to do, but what actions are gonna move us towards our goals. Now, if you're chatting, we're, we all understand that there are just a very few things that move us toward our goal of increasing our revenue. Again, the point of today's class, improve your time management and productivity, engage to create that passion and drive for what you do, and then help you build your revenue. So if you will, go into the chat and let's just take a moment. What are the things that we need to do every day to grow our business? What are the things that are going to make your business grow? So I'm going to pause, and if you will, chat in the business. Put down here, what are those things that we need to do that are actions that will move us towards our goals? So let's see who comes up with something. Moneymaker calls, follow up, touch out to past customers, call customers, referrals, and prospects, reach out to new clients, time contacting buyers and sellers, Follow up with customers, lead generation, follow up with potential clients for a, yep, keep them coming. What are those things that we need to do every day? And here's the hard part. 
is that it is hard to get motivated to do those things. I'm gonna simplify that for you so that we can make it. All right, so first thing that I want to do when I'm creating is I wanna know clearly what my goal is. Now, we're not talking about annual goals today. We're talking about goals for today. When I talk about time management and it leading toward a goal of increasing revenue, you know, we can go back and say, okay, here was January 1st of this year. And today is now, it's hard to believe it's May. And we're looking at May and we can come in and we can say, hey, have I hit my annual goal or my mid-annual goal? That's not what we're talking about today. You do have to have a clearly defined goal but I want to flip that on its head and say, what is your goal for today? So the handouts are in there, John, if you'll re put the handout link in there, that'll help. But I want to make sure, Ooh, I saw a good one. Norman says speak to three people today. And, and John has just reposted this handout. What are the actions that are going to move you towards your goal today? In order to answer that question, we have to ask from the beginning of the day, what is my goal for today? And I'm writing with a mouse. So this is the key question that we need to ask every day is not what's my goal for the year, but what is my goal for today? When I wake up in the morning, I need to create a written plan of what I'm going to do today that's going to lead me forward towards hitting my annual goal. In order to do that, what activities are going to move me toward my goal? What am I going to do today? How do I prioritize them? And then how do I put them into a written daily plan of action? So here we go. John, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for just a moment and I'm going to put this link to this page into the chat. So let me pull this up. I want, oops, I want you to pull this up as we go into it. This is the next handout. John, if you'll make sure that people get this handout. This is the next handout. It's called the Daily Progress Report. And you are welcome to copy it and paste it. If you can, make sure that that link works. Thanks, Madeline. I see that that link is working. I'm going to give you one more handout. So you'll want to make sure that you stay. All of these things are here for you. And I see that Helen is saying that you have to write three handwritten notes. I love that. Okay, I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. The handout that I've just sent to you is called the Daily Progress Report. And this Daily Progress Report is the one sheet of paper that I created that changed everything about how my business grew. And all of those things that you've just put into chat are so incredibly key to what we're gonna be talking about. I'm gonna come back to this in just a second. The Daily Progress Report, and you have it now where you can download it, is a simple tool. When you download that, the very first thing I want you to do is to take ownership of your day. You know, so often we blame things on other people and we say, well, I can't get that done today because so many people are pulling me in all these different directions. So every morning I wake up, I print off my daily progress report. I say that today is May 12th and I no longer make excuses for other things that are going to come into my day. So the first piece of practical advice is take ownership of your day. The second thing that we're going to be looking at is I can't do everything. There are millions of things that I could do, but what are the five things that I will commit to do? We call this the five before 11. And you'll see how this works in just a moment. What would happen to your daily plan of action if you took seven minutes in the morning to think through all of the things that you could do and decided to focus on how you can down, I see some people are not able to download. I mean, now I've gotten, 
Is everybody else able to download the pieces? I want to make sure yes, no. Joyce says the first link is not working for her. Okay. Joyce, if it no longer continues to work for, with you, uh, oh, great. Okay. So here's the written plan of action. If you will, on your day, you know, today's the second, and write down here are the five most important things that I'm going to commit to accomplish today. Not a hundred things, but what are the five things that you're going to commit to accomplish? Now we're going to go back to that that question that we had a moment ago. And if you will, and John's going to continue to, yes, these are the same um, handouts that are sent out in the email. And we're also attaching them here if you didn't receive the second email. We're going to come back in. My guess is if you have a to-do list, there are 50 things that you could do, but go ahead and put back into the chat what's going to grow your business. I saw them a moment again, but I want you to download in the chat what are those high value activities that we know are going to grow our business? And I'll go ahead and begin it. We've got to call people. You'll start chatting with those things. We have to reach out and make sure that we are talking. There you go. That we're talking to prospects. Who else? We all know these things that we're connecting. And I'm going to show you all of the secrets to time management. Touching out with past customers. Yep. There's the handout again. Find out how you can help people. Absolutely. One of the things that I think is key is to do customer discovery. And customer discovery. Again, I'm writing with a mouse. So forgive my handwriting here. So if you will commit to taking your time to doing five high value things before 11 a.m. in a week's time, five high value actions every day times seven days, you'd accomplish 35 high value actions. Now I think what happens to us is we feel like we have to sit down and call a hundred people, but what would happen if we sat down and actually did five important things a day? Now, it does boil down to this. This is the key. We can write down whatever plan we have, but the bottom line is, we have to contact people and social media is key. All of those things are key, but we have to pick up the phone and call them. So these daily contacts are the key to the difference between any kind of time management. When I was doing this first research, I found that the average financial advisor, again, I was a financial advisor, the average financial advisor made nine outbound calls a day nine outbound calls a day. If they're working eight hours, that's roughly one call per hour. Now, I was young when I got in this business, but if I'm talking about time management, what if I went from one call per hour to two calls per hour? Now, those are high value. You have to go and call people and you'll see where my business skyrocketed, but if we can make 18 high value actions a, a day, and you'll see that as I go into the next slide. All right, so John, I've got one more handout to send out and it's gonna look like this. They were in um, the email that I sent out. Some of you may not have received the updated email, but when I'm teaching, people show me all of these tools, but I want them to actually show me what it looks like so I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen for a moment. I'm going to pull up the last handout that we have. And I'm going to put it into chat. And I'm going to make sure that all of you can download that. So if you can, copy and link and let me know if you can see that. And so I'm waiting for people to say yes, they can download that handout. Great. Okay, so this is where it gets, I think, really exciting is that I've shared kind of some of the things that we do. In fact, I'm going to go backwards and just bring you up. Can't download it. We'll, I think that we'll be able to help people do that um, afterwards. Okay, so I'm going to start here. 
we talked about a formula for failure, a few errors in judgment every day. That's when we don't have a plan of action, we blink our eyes and the day passes us by. This class on stop being overwhelmed, we're overwhelmed when we have thousands of things to do. What happens if we just to have a few simple disciplines? It's not gonna overwhelm me if I just do five things before 11. I believe these simple disciplines are the key to time management. So we talked about, okay, I've got all of the things in the world I could do. How can I prioritize my tasks? My goal for you is just to choose five of them. We then have to organize them into the sheet of paper that I've called the daily progress report. And we can simplify those things down into one tool. So at the beginning of the day, we often start our day, we're overwhelmed, we blink our eyes and the day is gone. By using these tools and creating a written daily plan of action, you can simplify it. The four strategies, what actions are gonna move you towards your goals? Call, 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 call. What are you gonna to do today? We're gonna to wake up in the morning and go to bed at night. Let's make sure that we do high value things first. How do you prioritize those things? You're gonna see it in just a moment in action. And then do you have a written plan of action? So here we are. We looked at the daily progress report, the blank one. We said, first thing, take ownership of your day. Second thing, make a choice not to be overwhelmed with thousands of things that you could do, but to spend some time choosing the five things that will absolutely grow your business, that will make your time valuable. And if you were to choose five things, over seven days, you'd accomplish 35 things. The key is outbound contacts. The average financial advisor, when I started talking, made nine outbound calls a day. My guess is the same is true for realtors. We get so tied up in doing other things that we don't make the outbound calls. So it was at that point that I said, okay, let's look at what it really looks like for me when I was using this sheet of action and how this will tie into your time management, how you can track your time management, how you can focus on the most important things and how you can give yourself credit so at the end of the day, we get to enough. Now John's put this link in there and so you should be able to see that here are the pieces of the daily progress report that we use. This is an actual image of what I did when I was planning a day. What will I do? What are the five most important things that I will attempt to accomplish before 11 o'clock? If you're in the real estate business or as a financial advisor, the most important things that you can do need to come on your five before 11 list. What are the five things that you'll commit to do? This is the same thing. I took seven minutes the night before and I said, okay, I'm going to call this prospect. And when you print out this worksheet and you write it down, that I'm gonna call James Hill, all the names have been changed, but I'm gonna call James Hill and you physically write it down. You make an emotional commitment to yourself. I said that day that I was also gonna call Sarah Jones to follow up on a referral. I was gonna call Bill Crawley to thank them for a referral. I was gonna set an appointment with Bill George and I was gonna finish making a recommendation for an appointment. So those were my five things. If you can see these check marks at the end of the day, I was able to get four of the five things done. My goal was to take high value actions. In the morning, I took my strategy and I said, what am I going to do today? What are the high value things? What are the most important things? We talked about the fact that you have to prioritize those tasks. And so that's what this sheet of paper will do. Tomorrow, when you're planning your day, I want you to go in and print off a blank copy of the daily progress report. I want you to think through, what is your goal for the day? Well, if we're in business, then I think one of the things we have to think about is what's going to increase revenue. At the top of my pages, and you can see my book here, at the top of my page, I will typically write, not only what is my goal for today, 
but what will make me revenue? So this is a page a couple of days ago. I'm going to come back to it. When you wake up in the morning, I want you to say, what is my goal for today? And the next question on time management is what action or actions will increase my revenue? And then I want you to ask another question. What actions will make my work more meaningful? These are the kind of things that we need to do to re-engage in work. We have to know what are those actions that are gonna make us revenue? Well, it's pretty clear, calling people. When you set your five before 11, each one of these things need to start out with a verb. John and I were talking about that, that these, if you're gonna take action, you have to then start it with a verb. So what does all this look like? I want you to know how simple it is. You have millions of things that you can do. This is why we're overwhelmed. We have too many things. The best way to not be overwhelmed is to create strategies to ask what's my goal. You can't do it all. We put these to-do lists together of 20 or 30 things, but out of that, what are the five highest value things that you can accomplish? If you will choose to print it out, to write down, here are the five things I can do, not 20, we have a much better opportunity to check these off. Now I'm gonna, again, ask questions. If you were to only accomplish five things a day, five things high value times seven days would give you 35 high value actions in the chat. Tell me if you were to accomplish five high value actions over the next week, what would happen to your business? Let's see if we do these simple things, let's see in the chat what would happen to your business. And if at the same time we said, what actions are gonna make my life more meaningful? That if we said, what are those things that drive me? Well, helping someone buy a first home, helping people connect, um, all of these things will happen. But if I can just do five things, my business was up 62%. Why? Because I didn't try to do everything. I focused on the highest value things. Now here's where the secret sauce is gonna come in. I have to move this out of my way here. Hang on, let me move my chat box out. I'm about to show you the biggest secret. Um, we call this the secret sauce. I've only handed these things out kind of a little bit at a, at a time. So if we make outbound activities that are high value, how will it grow my business? I hope y'all are excited about the secrets. I love, oh! Look at that, Helen, stop procrastinating. I think that's the next class that we're doing in June. So, okay, so here's my list of five before 11. If you look over on the side of the daily progress report, you're gonna see these little tick marks, these little dashes and hashes here. This is the secret sauce. Now I'm competitive enough as a salesperson that I wanna do well. And if you're in this business as a realtor, you're making a living doing this. It's a tough time. There's a lot going on in the world, but realtors are making money all around us. And so the way that realtors are making money is that they're doing things that focus on making money. So this was a real day. I keep track or I keep score, uh, score of the value of every action I take. And I keep score on these little hash marks. So when somebody calls in, when Ashley called in, I was a stockbroker with an IRA question, I got credit for that, but it wasn't super high credit. It was like just one little tick. When June, I called her and rolled over a muni bond, a municipal bond, I got one point, basically one little tick mark. But when I would set an appointment with a prospect, so here's a set an appointment, anything that I did that brought people in, I got three points because some of these things have lower value to me as a salesperson. 
it's lower value to answer question. It's still valuable to the customer, but it's more valuable for me to set an appointment with a prospect. I'm not talking about just customer service here, but what I'm talking about are what are those high value things that are gonna help move us forward. And so when I would set an appointment, rather than just saying, hey, I set an appointment, I would give myself three points. Now, as silly as that sounds, I'm almost 60. For me to say I have done something valuable absolutely makes a difference. When I would host an appointment, I would get five points. Can you see what I'm doing here? I am setting myself up for success. If we don't have a plan of action where we write down, here are the five things I'm gonna do, and then it becomes a yes or no. I'd like to have more time to go in with people because can you see where keeping score makes a difference? I play tennis, I play tennis poorly, but we keep score. And when we do that, it does make a difference. We're beginning to wrap up this. I do want to save time to answer any questions, but when it comes to stopping being overwhelmed, the things that are likely overwhelming you are those things that are low value. It's the low value tasks that overwhelm us. And not only do they overwhelm us, but they drain us of energy. When you look at that list of all the things that are unfinished and they're low value and you can't get them done, you've started your day, you woke up early, you've gotten to the end of the day, you've done a lot of low value things, but basically you've blinked your eyes and you feel like another day has passed by. How can we fix that? We say, what's our goal for today? What will make us revenue today? What's gonna make my work more meaningful? This is a little heart. And then we write down those things and we say, I'm gonna commit to focusing on the highest value things. How do I keep track? It's just this simple, it's in your handout. There are things that are less valuable, which may be administrative things, it may be reading emails, definitely negative, uh, points should be things like social media, just looking at it. We have a lot of time wasters. But if I were in a classroom with you, I would say, let's focus on the most important. And we already know what those things are. It's making outbound calls. It's networking. But here's the big thing that I will tell you is the easiest that I've ever done are what I call prescriptive, pre, hang on, can't spell, um, prescriptive, precipitating, this is the big key, events. Prescriptive means it's a, I'm making a point to do it. Precipitating events, my guess is when you look back, almost all of the houses that you've sold have happened because somebody told you they were selling a house, somebody told you they were moving in. A precipitating event is where we can call every person we know and just tell them, and this is the script, this is high value, time management, not scary prospecting. I call people up and I say, hey, there's gonna come a point where people around you are gonna need to buy or sell a house. I'm not asking that person, I'm saying there are gonna be people, I'm doing that now. You may not have known that I just started two weeks ago or you may not have known that I've done it for 10 years, but I love buying and selling houses. And when something happens, when you're bumping into somebody at the grocery store and they say their son or daughter's moving back into town, I'd love for you to think of me. I'd love for you to think of me when somebody is retiring and moving someplace else. I try to make three or four precipitating calls a day. Not scary at all. These webinars, you know, I hope when somebody here has a big event where there are 4,000 people coming that, that you guys will think of me and say, hey, time management is great. I'm not having to sell anything to anyone because my goal here is to train you, but let as many people know about what you do as you can. So again, the script is, hey, I bumped into my druggist. You know, I just heard that you're, um, may have whatever. And when somebody has that, then contact me. Here's how I keep track. We will not have time to go through all of it, 
but I made a simple scoring sheet. If I made an outbound call, I got one point. If I reached them, I got a point. If I talked to a prospect, I got three points. If I held a face-to-face -face appointment, I got five points. If I went to a community networking event, I got five points. If I hosted a webinar or educational class, I got one point for every person. And so my goal was to end the day with 25 points. Now, that's high value. It, it's not super hard to say, okay, 25 points, if I call eight prospects, I'm gonna get to 25 points basically. If I have two meetings, I get 10 points for the two meetings, then I only have to call five prospects. Time management is about not trying to do everything, but it's certainly able to have two appointments a day and call five prospects. That's not overwhelming. So those are the things that I do. I'm gonna wrap up and I'm gonna save five minutes for questions. Time management is basically a question of, am I gonna focus my time on doing this action or am I gonna focus on that action? It's simply a yes or no. When you choose to focus on this, you are automatically not focusing on that. I'm gonna encourage you to focus on high value actions rather than low value actions. And if you're just getting started, the best way to do that is to keep a list of every action you take for the next week or so. And then at the end of the day, look back and say, was that high value or was it low value? And as you begin to see those things that are high value, do more of them. I'm only asking people to do five high value tasks a day. So what is this a picture of? And I'll let people guess if they'd like to. Can you see this image? What is this an image of? It is not an aerial photograph of Jonesboro. I'm gonna let the chat. It's a turtle. Oh, it's a cow. You're right, it is a cow. Can everyone see the cow? This is a picture of a cow. This is an ear of the cow. This is the jawline of the cow. This is the nose. You can kind of see the nose of the cow. This is their jawline. This is the ear of the cow. This is the top of the head. This is an eye and this is an eye. How many people can now see the cow? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, yes. Well, let me help you. Okay, so there's the cow. Can you see it now? It's completely clear. Here's the thing about time management. We already know what we need to do. There's just no doubt. We can see, we can see without, a, without any hesitation once we've been made aware of that we need to do some things. We need to start the day. What's my goal for today? Simple, let's increase revenue and let's make life more meaningful. If that's what we need to do, then what are the five things that are gonna increase revenue? Not a hundred, we don't have to call a hundred prospects. We don't have to call a hundred, we just have to call five. What are the precipitating events? Who can we just say, hey, I'm now in real estate. When something happens, call me. You know, not really hard sell. We know it, we see it. The beauty of the seven minute life is we don't have to do a thousand things, we just have to do one. And once you see the simplicity of the seven minute life, now you can't see anything but the simplicity of focusing on high value actions. There's just no way you can't see the cow. So last thing is I wanna say, and if you will put any questions you have, I know we only have two minutes left. We'll be having another class specifically on how to stop procrastinating and dealing with interruptions. In June, you'll be receiving information. But this is an image of a cow path. And I think what happens when a cow goes back to the barn, they always go down the same path. They have all kinds of acres and acres that they could go down, but the cows always go down the same path. That's what we've done. We've gotten into faulty habits of doing the same thing, of thinking that we have to get 100 things done or 20 things done. What I wanna say is we don't have to do all this. We don't have to be overwhelmed we can just start a new behavior of focusing on five high value actions and committing to getting those done. So that's where we were. We had 
four objectives today. What actions move you towards your goals? What are you going to specifically do today? How do you prioritize those five high value things? And do you have a written plan of action? So I, we've got one minute left. There are things in the handout. We love doing this. Again, it's a precipitating event. You may be going to a conference and the speaker has canceled. Make sure that people reach out to us. If there are things that we can help you with, my phone number is there, but we're here today to talk to you. I'm gonna stop sharing. Yes, do you have the PowerPoint link? John, can you put that back in to the chat? This PowerPoint is all there. The handouts are also there. I will stay over for just a minute. Are there any questions that you have? We are recording this. I'll make sure that we put it on our Facebook page. Um, gosh, we've had a great crowd today. Thank you, Allison. Thank you, Veronica. I'm glad that y'all were here. John's putting the handouts in and also the other Oh, Sharon, thank you. I'm so glad that y'all were able to make it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is fun. I hope you'll be able to make it to the next two. This is my passion and work. This is what we do. Um, our Facebook page is, uh, what is it? Facebook, The Seven Minute Life. Oh, I guess it, if you just go to The Seven Minute Life, I should put that there. I will be posting that. Um, let's see, it's, it's just Facebook at The Seven Minute Life. And so I'll be posting this there. I hope it's helpful. I wanna make sure that we say thank you. Um, let me go all the way back to the front of this. I definitely wanna say thank you to the Florida Realtors Association. They were the ones that have sponsored this and made this possible for everyone. So if you get a chance, reach out to the Florida Realtors. They're doing a great job and just send them a note that says thank you for having Allison here. Um, I think that's about it. If, are there any questions? I'm happy to answer them. Otherwise, I will see you next week. I mean, I'm sorry, next month. Okay, John, I think we've done it. We'll see everybody next time. Thank you. We're awesomely glad that you were here. Bye-bye.